Hey guys, uh, Spikey here for another ranked game commentary. This time we got some uh, kind of low ranking guys, but I went with it because Wraith, one of the uh, one of the developers of the game, is one of the guys playing, and it just started, so I figured, yeah, what the hell. So we got Wraith and Gimbal here, and uh, starting off with the Peaks Merid with uh, Gift of the Jin, of course. I think it's the only upgrade it has on that slot and distract. I'm actually kind of bummed that they changed that. It was really a great unit for a very specific deck that I had it in. And now it's probably a better unit overall, but it's awful in that deck now, so it's no fun. Alright, we're gonna keep ignoring global chat though. There's the Blood Phoenix. Uh, first deploy from Wraith up there. Uh, just going for a side font for now. He's probably going to just take that and then start bringing it in. Try and put pressure on maybe that font or whatever. Uh, Gimbal here decided to just go for his side font there and then send the uh, golem there for that one. Uh, that Merid's, I guess he's probably going to start bringing it in. Let's get that grid up. So we know where the chasms are and where the impassable terrain is and this bullshit vegetation. There's the uh, the Elsari Tomb Raider. Looks like he's running uh, Hunter Meek on it with Hidden Rock. Now it's not going to work on either of those guys. The Hunter Meek isn't. But, you know, if he deploys anything cheap, then he's just asking for it to get killed. So he kind of he still wants that blood phoenix to die for the most part because it's going to get that uh that blood tracker and that dark favor hitting again but he also at the same time wants to get off probably as many hexes as he can you know before it dies that way it's you know at least kind of useful in that first stage there's the uh cyclonic fesh now I think uh, Gimbal here may be running kind of a, a lightning deck. That's kind of what it's looking like. Because he's got the, the Merid and the Overcharged and the Cyclonic Fesh there. So he's taking that mid font. Um, obviously it's just going to get contested, but you know, that was going to happen regardless. There's the Hex. Uh, hitting him with the uh, paralytic feedback, which is not as good as it used to be, and I still think it's perfectly fine, but a lot of people bitch and moan about it because it's not uh, the what like three turns that it was. It's only two now, which uh, or no, it used to actually be like four turns, and three is three is fine. I can I can totally see three being reasonable but it used to be just way, way ridiculous. Like, you'd have your guy fucking sitting there paralyzed for ages. Uh, anyways, there's the Bloodbinder count. So it looks like he's playing some level of, uh, maybe a vampire deck? Like a bleed deck, maybe? Well, not necessarily bleed, but vampire kinda thing. I don't know, that should be kind of cool. This is one thing I do, I will admit that I do kind of like about low rank games, is that you'll see a lot more themes playing against each other as opposed to uh, just various meta decks. Like, I don't know if you noticed, but a lot of my higher rank games, it's just a mixed deck against another mi mixed deck, and it gets kind of old real quick. And, uh,. I mean, like, really, like, you, you really can't think of anything else better to play than just a mixed deck? Like, come on now. Now, uh... Hold on now. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so he's got the Cyclops Shaman out now with uh, Backlash now instead of Corrupted Nora, which I thought was kind of a a poor change. I like Corrupted Nora as an ability. I liked... But I also like direct shrine damage. I'm that guy, so I'm probably not one to be making that call. Now he's probably going to do the hex on the uh, the Merid there. 
because it's off cooldown now, or it should be, I believe. And he's otherwise going to probably move in. He might have uh, uh, whispers on him, but I don't think that would work for Hex. I think that's just basic attacks. So I'm not sure if that's what that is or not. Smacking him with uh, just the regular attack there. He's got, you know, he's got shitloads of damage. But he also has uh, Mercenary. So, I mean, that's something you gotta gotta be careful for, because after a while he's gonna start costing, you know, tons of Nora. I mean, he's, he's great, you know, early on when you deploy him, but, oh, there we go, he's going for the, uh, the Blood Phoenix. Which is, uh, there it goes, it dies and is reborn, doing damage and causing bloodied again on this guy, really, again? I guess he was deemed, oh, okay, yeah, because the deploy order, he was closer. So there's the elemental vortex on the overcharged golem, so he's got three different auras right now. I mean, they're all, uh, I mean, you know, he also has that death nova, too, so I mean, shit, he's going to be you know, dealing some pretty decent damage. 14 aura damage on its own. Because he's got aura 3 on the electricity. But then if they kill him, he uh, he's going to explode for 14 damn damage. Like, that's, uh, that's going to hurt. But, he does have his Blood Phoenix now in second form, who's actually pretty well worth its cost. There he is, going for the Bloodbinder count. Kill. There, it's going to boom. Kaboom. Now he's just out of attack range with that uh, that Tomb Raider on that Merid, but he can move in and hex it still, doing some decent damage, as well as uh, reducing its damage to 4 there. Uh, Gimbal here, though, did last turn deploy that Stormflyer, forgot to mention. There's Wraith with Zulos. <laughs> Some more Dark Favor. That's interesting. He's running a uh, uh, Tariff and Dark Favor 2 for his build to run him at 90 Nora. That's kind of an interesting interesting build. I'm so used to seeing Zulos with Dark Favor 3. It's just it seems wrong to see him with it at any other level. So that Merid's dead because of uh, Eviscerated. It's going to kill it at the end of the turn. That's why he moved up and double tapped, even though it was only four damage. It's like, well, whatever, four extra damage is still four extra damage. Obviously, he's getting the uh, the jolt on there to get shocked, so he's going to be taking three there. So I mean, it's eleven total damage. Plus, I mean, when that actually pay, uh, plays out, you know, it'll be uh, what fourteen total. I mean, if he doesn't cleanse it, which I don't think he has a, a cleanse, and I, I don't think he's going to bother just to get rid of Shocked. So, I mean, he did 14 damage on his way out, but he's dying. So there's the uh, the Hyenid Breaker with the uh, the static greeting. I'm surprised I haven't seen the, uh, the uh, what's-her-face, Sparkles, the Spark Crone. That would be like a serious game changer here because then suddenly all of his guys would be cursed. I'd be like, oh yeah, how are you going to deal with that shit? You know, that's what I like to do. I mean, she's expensive, but man, that spark curse is a hell of an ability. So he's probably... I guess he's probably just gonna... move on in? Really? There's the blood crest. Okay, so, I mean, he's not going to die, necessarily. I mean, he need, would need an extra attack. He's got shocked, so, I mean, he's going to have that. Uh, there's the Blood Fiend, though. Throwing down. Can't move right off the bat, because those start on cooldown, but... You know. There he is, smacking the Stormflyer, though. A little bit. I'm pretty sure that Phoenix is still uh still pretty well dead. He's just gonna smack it with that storm flyer and then double tap it with the uh the fesh there.
And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's just it's dead. I'm not seeing it living in any sense because he's going to be shocked as well. Again, just from uh, electricity overload. But or I mean, alternately, he can even move in the uh, the shaman there. What's he doing? There's a lightning storm, so he's going for the AOE. Ooh, he may be going for that Tomb Raider with the uh, the Storm Flyer there. I mean, he can uh, he can very nearly chain lightning. I mean, if he could move to that spot, he would be able to, but he couldn't quite. So he's gonna smack that, but he's not gonna die. He's gonna stay there. So I mean, he can't disengage and attack, but he might go for the extra attack there with the shaman. Oh, that blood crest just keeps doing that. It's like the the vex thing where it just keeps it at 1 HP like that. Ooh. I mean, I, if I were him, I would have just been wailing on these other guys instead at that point. Because uh, that blood crest is going to keep doing that. But I mean, I guess we'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. That right there caused that to die for some reason. I'm not not totally sure, but I guess it happened. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's uh. I guess trying to take out that storm flyer, his uh, phoenix there is pretty well dead. Oh, that's why it, it would have died right then, just from him moving that in from static aura. So he's going to have to hex uh, something if he's got hex. I think it's still on cooldown, though, so he's kind of SOL there. Um, I think his phoenix is just going to die at the end of the turn. Or I guess he can just do that. There's the kill on the storm flyer. But I mean, he still has the, uh, oh, he w had the fish. What just happened there? Oh, the blood magic from the, uh, there we go, the bloodbinder count used his blood magic there. So we've got the shaman and the uh, the breaker here. I mean, he can get over and contest that font with that breaker, but that would put him in a pretty bad position as far as uh, getting retaliated on, because these guys are all range and they're all uh, five range. They can all move in real easy. And he's still uh. Still didn't do anything with his uh, blood fiend up there, though. I guess he's just holding it there to to hold the font. But I mean, if he were to move it up to like there, then I mean, he still would be holding that font, I think. Well, well, no, because it would have to go around him. Except he would also be closer. Well, I guess he would also be in range. So he's 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 just keeping out of range for now, I suppose, with that. Now that I think about it. But let's see what the plan here is. He can't uh, can't hit the Bloodbinder count with the Breaker there. He can move up and start smacking Julos. He also can run up and kill that Tomb Raider. No, he can't. He would have been able to. But he cannot. And so instead he's going to run up and smack Julos and uh, the Bloodbinder count, I guess, rather than focus his damage. Now, if he had another AoE, then he could have uh, could have made things problematic. So there's the, uh, however the fuck you say that, Mundanugu? Whatever. the That guy. <laughs> He's thrown down. He's uh, lightning as well, so I'm pretty sure this is a lightning deck at this point. Because it's all been lightning champs, and these guys have all been 
kind of, for the most part, um, vampire-y, except for this guy, the votary. But, I mean, he's not... I, know, I suppose he's he's kind of vampire-ish, I guess. So it's kind of like a, a mixed uh, vampire deck, or a vampire-heavy mixed deck, whatever you want to call it. Now he can't quite get over there with that uh that votary. And he's not cursed, so he can't uh pain curse him. Oh he's got the uh ionization going down. There he is, he's in the font. If he had a relic he could have done that last turn. And it probably would have been a better move, but I don't know if he actually had a relic or not, so that's that, I suppose. Now, he's still within total attack range by that dead fairy, so he's just going to die uh, next turn. He's just going to tap him once with the dead fairy, because there's no way he's got whispers on him, because it's in a dead magic zone, which is something I really think a lot of FW players take for granted is that fucking dead magic zone that they've got in their fonts and shit. Because it makes it real damn hard to run up and contest a font, because you can't do a bunch of tricky, like, single target spell type of shit that you would normally do. Like, you can't run in Vortex, or you can't run in Whispers, or Split Personality, or any of that shit. It's all, uh, you just run in and that's it. I mean, if you've got an AoE, obviously you can still hit them, but you know, I mean, come on now. There's the uh, the hyenaed pack leader. Run in jolt on it to, uh, I suppose, make it vaguely like, no, yeah, it's lightning, it's got jolt, shut up. You know, that kind of shit. But a single attack there with the uh, the dead fairy will kill that. Reheal and Julos there. And now there's a, a Blood Phoenix deployed. Oh, okay, because he's got the extended zone because of the Blood Fiend, that's right. Katunk, there it is. It's dead. Font is his again. Julos is there, back with pretty good HP. The Votary's kind of moving up a little, I suppose. Bloodbinder counts sticking back. There's the Pain Curse, I think. Which just, yeah, just got the pack leader there. He was the only thing cursed still, but... You know, he's got his range here. He can kind of start getting ready to move in. There's the Dream Crusher. He's going to go, yeah, he's trying to go and take out that Bloodbinder count. Except that he just doesn't have... He does not have the damage for it. He's just out of range. I mean, if he were one one space closer, he would have had the damage for it. But he does not. Now, if he can... Uh... Oh, come on now. Surely you're not just going to set him up for a nice blood bind. I mean, because I think... Uh... Well, I'm actually, I think that might still be on cooldown, so I suppose he's fine in that regard. Now, he's still just leaving his Blood Fiend up there, so that was mostly, I guess, a deploy for <laughs> Necrosis to get the uh, the extra deployment zone and to hold his font, you know, because he was starting to put pressure on that. So there's, uh, there's another Blood Phoenix mid-font there. So, I mean, at this point, the game's pretty well decided. Because um, I mean, FW with, you know, when their font when they have when their font up, I mean, you're pretty much fucked at that point. Because they're they're the faction that can beat you, you know, being a font or two down. And when they're a font up, then boy, you got problems. So there's uh, Julos even moving up a little bit, going for a risky move there, smacking it and backing off. Just outside of uh, death range, I believe. Well, you know, he can still move up and pummel with that pack leader, though. So, I mean, Julos there 
um, I think may be dead. I was going to do, uh, what, 10 there, so do 9, plus, uh, what, 11 and 11, so 22, plus, uh, plus 9. It won't quite be enough. Oh, there he is. He's moving up for the chain lightning for a little bit extra damage. Why did you... You just completely... Okay, never mind. I was going to say you completely ruined your chance of killing Zulos there, but no, you're still good. He can move up and uh, pummel him if he wants. Which he, uh, which he should. Yeah? You're going you're gonna to move there and, and pummel, right? To kill Zulos? Please? I mean, he's he's cool too, I suppose. But uh, no, seriously, move up and pummel that damn Julos. Kill that thing. For the sake of you having any chance this game. Well, I, maybe he doesn't... No, he still needs to. No, don't, don't. Why? He comes back to life. Uh, why would you do that? You could have killed his Julos. He's not paralyzed anymore. That's only a paralyzed for one turn. And besides, he wouldn't have stayed paralyzed because of the aura. You should have killed his Zulos. Why would you not do that? Oh well. I suppose he wanted to just sacrifice his uh, his pack leader there. I mean, the, the game's still over at this point anyways. Uh, I mean, there wasn't really a chance that he was going to completely turn it around, but... That, that that just would have been so much better of a move to kill the Julos because that Julos doesn't immediately come back. I mean, it, it'll come back pretty quick due to the FW bonus, but you know, not that fast. D really? You know, he can just lightning skewer again, and really. I just, I, I just don't even. That's okay, the pack leader's down. Uh, he's gonna go for that shaman next. Accidentally killing his Shulos. <laughs> I don't know if he did the math to figure out how much damage that was gonna do beforehand or not. He still isn't doing, not doing anything with that blood fiend there. But it looks like he uh, decided to go for the hex on that and that. Ex interesting. And then even hungry dead. Interesting moves. There, of course, is the other lightning skewer. You just let him get that off for whatever reason. He can't quite kill the the votary with the uh, the shaman there, but if he wanted to, he could move in with the dream crusher and kill it. I mean, it wouldn't really be a very good move, but he could do it. There we go. The blood phoenix now is uh, like that, and he died. Lord. See, so he had, uh, by the way, if you're wondering why that thing died, he had Storm Acolyte and uh, was decaying. So he was uh, losing HP because of that. I'm not sure uh, why he was decaying, but he was, and he is as well. So, oh, does Hungry Dead add, have decaying now? Does it? Seriously? That's so cool. Uh, yada yada yada. Uh, Hungry Dead. Yada yada yada. No, it's just ensnared. I wonder why they, uh, why they're decaying. There must have been something that I'm not paying attention to that I missed. 
Oh, there's the Thunder Elemental, um, who isn't really all that, uh, all that lightning-y, really. He, I mean, he's got Thunder in his name, but it's it's all sonic damage. Well, I guess paralytic feedback, but I mean, that's still paralyzed. It's not actual lightning damage or anything. I don't know. Anyways, there goes the, uh, the Munda, what's it called? Oh, there's the Black Blade. Good old Baron. So he's just moving up now. Um, he's probably not going to move that votary up. There's no point to it. He can just move it back and pain curse. You know, until the thing's dead. Uh, he can move his dead fairy all the way up to that font, which he did. And then next turn he's just going to double tap that banner to kill it. There he is, man, moving the votary back. Uh, he moved up and, you really, dropped his tomb into the font to contest it. That's kind of a slick move. Because, I mean, like, that's something you definitely don't want to keep alive, but at the same time, like, it doesn't necessarily directly do anything right off the bat. Like, it kind of does a little bit, but come on now. Now, did he, uh, oh, he did another elemental, uh, vortex on the th thunder elemental there. To get some auras going. Um, not actually kill anything, but okay. There goes the banner, and five health on those two. So, I mean, it looks like he's actually going to make Wraith play it out which is an interesting strategy. There's the Essence Strain. Is he going to Pain Curse? Because, I mean, he can get... I think he has a Pain Curse this turn available that he can do if he doesn't kill it with uh, Baron here, which he did. So, I mean, I guess it wasn't uh, wasn't really all that necessary. Now he's going to move up and start wailing on that Dream Crusher. There he is, starting off with the Hex, so now it can't actually do too much damage in return. So now he can move up that Votary. And now he's even moving up his, uh, his Blood Fiend. There's the uh, the shades spawning from him uh, doing that thing to that relic. There's a blood crest again. Wow. Good lord. So uh, I mean, there's not really too much here now that Gimbal can do, other than uh, apparently that. That was uh, probably. Was that Electro Certificationized? Yeah. Which is actually kind of a really cool spell, because uh, they changed how it works, finally, to actually effectively make it work. Um, so, I mean, what it does is, for every real champ you have on your side of the board, um, it does four damage. And if it kills whatever it does, then it effectively does a lightning storm as well in uh, in an AoE, but it's otherwise it's a single target spell. And like, holy crap, you can get that doing some serious damage. I pack one of those in uh, in my Moga deck, and it's just ridiculous, because you'll have like, you know, fucking, you know, seven or eight little Mogas out there and a couple Garen, and now you're, you're sitting there, you know, with fucking, you know, uh, almost a dozen guys. That's a shitload of damage that that's going to be doing. Like, holy crap, man. So there he is, he's just getting ready to start wailing on that shrine. Uh, he's going to move that votary up probably, as well as the uh, the dead fairy, to start pinging it. Now if he has uh, mobilization, he can possibly even kill it this turn. Yeah, if he had a mobilization, he totally could have killed it. 
But he's holding back with that, that votary for now. Uh, just because, you know, he could throw down some initiative champ with, you know, range and kill him at any moment. Uh, what did he just deploy? Oh, right there, the, uh, the martyr. There's the fortify, so, I mean, it's not going down this turn. He's going to try for, uh, try to hold out for another turn, I suppose. <laughs> of course, good old guild chat. Shut up, go away. I'm trying to click on the map and move around. There he is also deploying the Moga Spark because he's got the electricity aura and he's like, aha, I can kill his blo uh, Bloodbinder and his uh, Blood Phoenix, except that he still has that Blood Crest there. Um, it's going to keep keep doing that. He's going to keep spawning Grave Warriors too, every real thing he kills. There's the, uh, the, the Museum Lamia. So it's kind of a, an overall meta meta deck, like a mixed meta deck that Wraith here is running, but it's real, real vampire kind of heavy sort of sub-theme that it's got going. Uh, one more space there, Wraith, if you want to take that font. I mean, you don't need to. You've already won, but you know. There's a lightning storm. And it still is not killing things. <laughs> oh man. There's the uh Ultok deploy. He's gonna keep trying to kill that uh that Blood Phoenix, I think. Which is kind of an issue. I mean he sort of wants the Blood Phoenixes to die to a degree. Oh there we go, he's got the, the Thunder Strike. He was able to kill another skeleton. Hey man, it kills a kill, right? And there's that blood phoenix going down and respawning. Because it, that one was the one that still needed to respawn. So here uh, here comes the avatar kill, I would say, uh, this turn. If he's got a mobilization, he's going to be popping it. And uh, if he doesn't, then what the hell is he doing? Oh, there's the reaper's blade on the blood phoenix to do massive amounts of damage which was wholly unnecessary but you know really made the whole process generally quicker there you go he's just got to do four more damage he'll probably do it with the the count there yep I guess mobilization probably would have been bad because he's got rebuke that would have been real shitty it would have been basically a, a board wipe oh that would have been hilarious actually if he had done that anyways that was the game See you guys next time.